Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome to another Creative Cal tutorial. Today's topic we're going to be covering something called light wrapping. Now if you do a lot of green screen keying then you're probably familiar with the term light wrapping. It's a concept that's pretty easy to understand but it's very easy to mess up and get wrong. Light wrapping essentially is a compositing technique that's designed to help blend keyed out green screen footage with a background plate. So I'll show you what I mean here with two examples. This first one, if I toggle off my light wrap layer, you see that I've got essentially just our keyed out actor with the green screen removed and then a bluish nighttime-esque background. Now, this all in itself isn't a terrible composite, but what we can do is we can take some of the image and light from our background layer and wrap it around the edges of our foreground actor like you see here. Now in this other example, we've got a bright background that is silhouetting this hand here. And so we've got some really nice light wrapping around the edge of this hand. And if I shut that light wrap off, you can see the difference it makes. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm gonna delete our light wrap layers from both of these compositions. And we'll start with this first one here where we're gonna be doing a darker light wrap. So to, to do this effect, essentially all you need is your background and your foreground, or in this case, our keyed out footage. So if I solo these on their own, you're gonna see essentially it's just two layers, a background and a foreground. We're gonna duplicate our background because this is the layer that we want to take the image and light data and then wrap around our actor. So we're gonna duplicate our background and we're gonna place that layer on top of our foreground layer. So it should be background, foreground, background. Now on our background layer, the first thing that we're gonna to want to do, I'm gonna solo this in fact, is we're going to go to effect, we'll find our channel effects and we're going to pick the set matte effect. Now what the set matte effect does according to Adobe After Effects' is user guide on adobe.com, is it takes the alpha mat or the alpha channel from another layer and substitutes it on whichever layer you have the effect applied to. So we're gonna take our mat from the alpha channel of our foreground. And right away, this is going to essentially cut out our background here that we have on top. And it's going to use the alpha mat from our foreground keyed footage, kind of as a track mat in a way. We're going to go ahead, we're going to invert this mat because we're going to apply a second set mat a little later on down the line and we're not going to invert it. And that's going to give us a nice soft blended edge on the inside here of our alpha mat. So set mat is the first effect that we have to apply. The second effect that we're going to apply for this darker image is a brightness and contrast effect so that we can control how bright or dark our background image that's being wrapped around the edge of our actor is. We can brighten it and darken it. So we'll go to effect, color correction, and brightness and contrast. And we're not going to adjust any of those settings. We're just going to leave them alone for now. The next thing that we're going to want to do is soften the edge of this mat. And the reason is because when we effectively have our, our light wrap going around the edge of our actor, we want to be able to blend or soften the edge of that wrap so that it's not covering over his entire body and it doesn't have a hard lined edge. So we're just gonna do a very simple fast box blur. So we'll go to our blur and sharpen, choose fast box blur. And I'll just increase that a little bit so that we have a soft edge. Because we're not going to be adding a bright light source behind this, we're not gonna add any sort of glow effects. So we'll just We'll skip over glow for now. Same thing with tint. I'm not really interested in tinting or desaturating this. So we're just gonna move on to our next effect, which would be a second set matte effect. So we'll go to effect, we'll go to channel, we'll choose set matte. We'll make sure that our foreground layer is selected and we're gonna leave invert matte unchecked. And you see what that does here is it essentially keeps that edge now inside the, the confines of, of our alpha channel here. So if I were to increase our blur radius, you're gonna see here that it's gonna blur and soften that edge. If I lower it really low, we're gonna have a nice tight line. So I'll increase it to say about here so that we have a nice soft edge. 
And then the last thing that we're probably going to want to have control over is where the, the darkest point of our light wrap and our most transparent point, which is out here on the edge. So what we can do is we can apply under matte a simple choker, and this allows us to essentially push that edge in, which is going to give us a harder lined edge around our side here. So with all of that done, we're going to just go ahead, we're going to unsolo this, and we're going to go ahead and we're going to decrease the brightness, which is going to darken our edge. We're going to increase and decrease our blur radius until we get a look that we like. Let's say something about right here looks fine. And we'll increase and decrease our shift edge, or our simple choker, I should say, until we get something that, uh, that we like. And then if this looks too dark, what we can do is we can just go to our background layer, hit our T key. In fact, we'll call this light wrap. So we'll go to our light wrap layer, and if you hit T, that brings open your opacity control, and we can increase or decrease the opacity. We still want to see some of the arrow here on our actor's forehead, so lower that to about 85%, do a little RAM preview here, and a little bit of a before and after. As you folks can see, this is, uh, this is looking real nice. We might even bump up our contrast a little bit just so that we have a punchier shadow that doesn't look so washed out. And in my sincere opinion, our before and after, it's night and day, realistically. Now, in our other example, we've got this hand here, and it's being silhouetted by our background, which is you know just this video of a sunset. And so we're going to do a very similar process, but we're also going to add like our glow in and things like that too, so that we have control over those uh, as well. So first thing that we're going to do is duplicate our background, Control D, and put it at the very top above our background. We'll solo this layer, and then we're going to go to Effect, Channel, and we'll choose Set Matte. We'll make sure that the mat that we're the layer that we're taking our mat from is our foreground and then we'll click on Invert Matte. Once that's done, we're going to go and apply our effects and brightness, just like we did before, a brightness and contrast effect. This will allow us to increase or decrease the brightness of the image that we're going to be wrapping around our hand here. We're going to apply Effect, Blur and Sharpen, Fast Box Blur, and we'll just give it a little bit of a blur. And then we'll add our glow, so Effect, Stylize glow. It's one of the things we did not do in our last example because you know there was nothing that should really glow and blow out as it wraps around the edge of our of our actor. Next thing we're going to do is something we didn't do before, and that's add a solid composite effect to our clip. And, and the reason we're doing that is because we're going to change the blending mode to an add or a screen. And so solid composite essentially takes a solid color and it composites it underneath you know, our layer. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to Effect, Channel, Solid Composite, and we'll make our composite color just a, a nice black color. And so now you see we no longer have any transparency because we're putting a, an actual composited solid black color underneath this layer. So there's there's no longer any transparency or alpha channel here that we need to worry about, so to speak. Once our solid composite is completed, we're just going to add our set matte effect again, like we did before. And we're going to make sure that we choose our foreground layer as the matte that we take the layer from. And we're not going to check invert matte this time. And as you see, this is now going to, once again, contain everything inside of our hand. And instead of our transparent background, we have a black background from our solid composite. Because what we'll do is we'll change the blending mode to screen and unsolo this. So if I have it at normal, you'll see here that we've got black, just solid black on the inside of the hand. But if we change the blending mode to screen, that's going to key out the black essentially and, and reveal our hand. And then last but not least, we're going to apply that choker effect under our matte drop down, simple choker, 
like we did before. So let's go ahead and start making adjustments to some of these settings to show you guys what we've got going on here. So I can increase or decrease our brightness, which is going to essentially control how bright the background image is that the edge of our light wrap here is being sourced from. So I'm going to decrease this. Oops. I'm going to increase and decrease it until I have a nice transition where the very bright spots from the sun are giving us this yellow edge. And then as it fades past the edge of the sun, it's going to turn into a nice red color. And if I increase or decrease the contrast, you can see we can smooth out that transition. So I'm just going to increase it a little bit just to give us a nice smooth fall off. Our blur radius is going to essentially control how far inwards into our alpha mat the blur is going to be. How much of the edge of our fingers do we want this light wrap to, to go around? So I'm going to give it a little thin light wrap. I don't want to go too crazy. So value of say about five. Now our glow, we're going to pretty much leave default in terms of its colors, its composite original settings, all of that. But we're going to, we're going to make changes to our glow threshold. By decreasing that, that's going to brighten or clamp the amount of glow that we have. Our glow radius is how far the spread of our glow is. And our glow intensity is obviously how intense the glow is. So we're going to decrease the glow intensity. I'll increase the radius. Maybe decrease the glow intensity. Maybe turn the blur radius up a little bit. It's looking nice. And then we have our simple choker. And this is going to be where we get to control where the edge of our glow is. Now, I'm actually going to just go ahead and set that until we no longer see any of the black outline as we did before. And maybe try add for our composite or blending mode. And there you have it. We've got this nice light wrap going around the edge of our fingers and the palm of this hand here. As you see, as the background changes, so do those color values. Very nice. So guys, this is a just real quick, easy way of adding a light wrap to your green screen composite. I think it makes all the difference in the world and just adding a little bit of realism into your shot. It's very simple to do. You don't need to go out and buy fancy plugins or presets in order to achieve light wrap effects or, or you know, purchase expensive green screen keying software that has light wrap utilities built into it. You can do it very simply just with background and a foreground that's keyed out. And uh, you can use the alpha channels and uh, you know, just with a couple quick effects applied, you guys can get a realistic looking uh, glow or in this case, shading around uh, the edges of your actor or whatever foreground objects you have. So if you guys found this tutorial useful, do me a favor, hit the like button, hit the bell notification icon, subscribe to the Creative Cal YouTube channel because I do intend on uploading many more tutorials through the future. And if you guys found value in this, please do like and share as well. Comment if you guys have any questions. I'll be as retentive as I can be or attentive as I can be in answering any questions or confusion that you guys might have. Once again, thank you for joining us here on Creative Cal. My name is Levi. And uh, we'll see you in the next tutorial.